Today, I am going to be giving my predictions for a hypothetical Minecraft 1.22 update. Disclaimer! I do not expect any of this to happen. This is purely what I would want added. Don't take any of it as full demands of Mojang. Also, I get that maps, data packs, texture packs, and mods add most, if not all, of these features to Minecraft already. I'm just suggesting things to be added to the base game. First, I want a measuring tape block. You know when you're following a build tutorial on YouTube or something, and you have to count out the height, length, and width of the build in blocks? Yeah, no. And while I am mentioning this for the base game, I will add that there's already an amazing Curse Force mod that does exactly this. Now, I do think they can make it look a little more Minecrafty for sure. And maybe you could craft it with a lead or fishing rod to see how far away you are from a certain mob. That would also be useful in multiplayer if you could hook it to other players so you could see exactly how far apart you are when traveling long distances. Something I recently have enjoyed is flying with an elytra using rockets charged with fireworks. This was really fun and creative because you could use this to do drive-by raids on villages or troll your friends in multiplayer when they fly behind you. But this is really dangerous, since even with Flight Duration 3 rockets, you still take a lot of damage in survival. So what if you can make firework explosions happen in front of you when flying? This could obviously be used to attack other players or mobs from the front, and also for a nice little firework effect that you can fly through. However, the fact that crossbows exist makes this one less feasible to me, as it would be very similar in use cases. Minecraft mods can and will be added to the base game. Back in the day, Mojang would hire modders to work within Mojang itself. So, what if the Immersive Portals mod was an option? Like, in the settings menu, turned on and off. It adds a lot of lag, and many people don't think it's their kind of thing, so having it as an option toggle would be better. But with this mod, Ruined Portals finally gained the immersiveness they've always wanted literally being a slice of the nether in the overworld. And on that topic, what about an option to directly install mods similar to data packs? This would remove the need for clients like Curse Forge and Modbrin, and it actually happened in early versions. Adding it back might be pretentious, but I think having one unified launcher for everything would boost convenience massively. One of the worst feelings ever is having to pick between your totem and shield in your offhand slot. You could always get caught without your totem and die painfully. So how about a totem of undying slot in armor? Like a slot on the chest plate where a totem can be placed, and if you die without a totem in hand, it removes it from the armor. And maybe there could also be a way to steal this totem from others while it's in there, making PvP have a whole exciting twist. Another thing I really want to add is new potions. One I've dreamed up is the Potion of Flight. You can actually already make any potion combination with commands, so it would be incredibly easy to add to the base game. This could be brewed with the new Wind Charge item, as that similarly lets you boost into the sky. The potion would give levitation for 30 seconds and slow falling for 60 seconds. Now the first way of getting levitation without a shulker. This would be especially useful when going through the end the first time, as you can easily float between the different end islands without yet having an elytra, the downside of the potions being fairly costly to brew. These could also be useful to combo with a spyglass to find structures easily, and would also provide a whole new twist to PvP. You can even clutch with them. They're so cool. Most Minecraft bugs are patched out once they're discovered, but a couple stay in as fully-fledged features. Things like TNT duping as an example, or several differences on Bedrock Edition in Java. And what bug was more iconic than the Nether Roof? You were never supposed to be able to get up here, but using a simple Ender Pearl, you can reach this endless expanse of Bedrock. But if Mojang is going to leave it here, how about some new stuff on the Nether Roof? Specifically, some kind of Nether Roof biome. One idea I had was the ability of ruined portals to spawn on the nether roof, which would not only give an incentive to come up there, but would also make it way easier to escape without many items in hardcore. 
And while we're on the topic of nether portals, merging magma and a bucket should craft into a lava bucket. I mean, the texture is literally the same as lava. This would allow stackable, easily transportable lava in shulker boxes or bundles. Yes, add the bundle. Please. Now, the Nether Roof is a pretty iconic area of Minecraft, but there once was another glitch in the game's code spawning weirdly iconic areas. The Far Lands. Back in beta, these could spawn 100,000 blocks from spawn, but some kind of new Far Lands could revitalize this old bug into a new biome, or structure, depending on how it would be classified. It would most likely be a structure biome mix, similar to the ancient city with its deep dark biome. My ideas are going to be entirely off the walls. What about a natural spawn for the April Fool's mods? Imagine the wither from the Love and Hugs update, or the potato spud from the potato update, alongside moon cows, bee loons, and the troll loot box test from back in 2011. Maybe even the wacky 2009 creepers could make an appearance. This would be absolutely hilarious to find just randomly. But these farlands cannot spawn within 10,000 blocks of the spawn chunk and spawn to height limit similarly to back in beta. Maybe even the legendary Hero Brine could make an appearance, and dropping a Hero Brine head similarly to other mobs that would be an absolute gold mine in multiplayer. Inside the new farlands could be chests. In these, you can get crazy items like those in April Fool's updates, and also every bad or useless enchanted book. What would be cool is a return to redstone traps, similarly to desert and jungle temples, but perhaps these would get figured out too quickly in the far land. Now, technically my sister came up with this one, but I genuinely think it would be insanely cool. A new sword enchantment? Essence of Bastion. Found in chests, rarely in bastions, and in the far land. Very occasionally, after killing an enemy, this enchantment would spawn a non-hostile, non-transforming piglin brute that follows you around and attacks mobs and other players in multiplayer. This could be really useful for things like trial chambers and raids, and could probably allow for some crazy automation in farms and other redstone trappings. The Illusioner and Giant are two really cool mobs that, as of now, can only be summoned with command. I think both should be added to survival in some capacity. The Illusioner is the cooler of the two by far, and can be added to raids and with the mansions, adding a very unique twist to gameplay with the cloning mechanism. Giants, while in effect just big zombies, could be really cool as well, especially with some revamped AI to work like other zombies do. I think the giant could just randomly spawn anywhere, but would spawn frequently in that Farlam's biome I talked about but exclusively in the Far Lands, we'd see a new mob. Baby giant zombies? Giants with the AI and speed of baby zombies. It would be nuts. And that's all. At least all of the major features. I think 1.22, or as I now will name it, the Crackhead Update, would add a lot of minute features and a couple of very pretentious major ones. This update more than likely is never made, or at the very least is only made as a joke, April Fools or a random snapshot. Anyways, if you enjoyed, tell me in the comments and make sure to watch this video here! I'm sure it's right up your alley. Oh and watch me on Twitch!